Hi folks, I've got some maintenance work to do today. I've got to change the grit in the sandblasting cabinet and we're gonna have a look at the Reliant Regal engines uh, a little bit later on. So let's get this sorted out. Right, well, for the last two times I've changed the grit in my sandblasting cabinet, I've brought the recycled sort of uh, glass media. And uh, to be honest with you, it's okay when you first start using it, but then it goes down to a powder and then basically it's no good whatsoever. I don't think it really is supposed to be used over and over again, but um, that's what I've been doing. So I've decided to go for some new stuff now, uh, a lot more expensive. This is like £25 for 20 kilograms, that is the powdered glass stuff, something like that. It's between 16 and 25 pounds for the powdered glass stuff. And uh, this stuff's 43 pounds. So it's a lot more expensive. So sitting here, I've got two 22 kilogram tubs, uh, and this cost me about 86 pounds in total, as opposed to about 40 pounds, half the, like double the price basically. So let's show you what I've got here now. As you can probably see here, we've got the aluminium oxide abrasive, now again, it's, it's ideal for sort of things like rust. Uh, they obviously use this outside as well, so it does quite a few different things. And uh, as I say, this is what should be uh, a lot better than this powdered glass stuff, because this you can use over and over again. So that's what I've actually brought now. I got this from Machine Mart, um, as you can see there, £43.19, including VAT, which is 20%. So it's a lot dearer. 22 kilograms in weight, but hopefully it should be better than this powdered glass, which I've got in here already. Let me show you this stuff anyway. Right, now this stuff, when it starts off, it's quite coarse, you probably can't see it, but as you can probably see, and let's get some out, it goes down very, very quickly to a very fine powder, and it really doesn't work very well on sort of rusted items anymore that are sort of heavily scaled, but, um, I can't remember how much of it I've got in here, but as I say, it's, 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 it's all got to come out. So I'm going to start emptying this out now. I'll put you on time lapse for that. I'm going to get some containers. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, that's that out. Now this stuff is more of a grit. This is 60 to 80 grit, this stuff. So um, should do the job of removing rust, no problem whatsoever. And I don't know if you can see, let me show you some of it. Oh. It's darker in color, and it's got more of a gritty texture to it. It still looks pretty fine, but as I say, the, if you look at this under a microscope, it's very jagged edges, whereas the glass stuff would, would look more like a powder. So this is what I'm hoping is going to be the best stuff. So let's get this in there. I've got all the other stuff out now, as you saw. And uh, I'm hoping this is going to be enough. It's 44 kilograms here. First 22 goes in. Quite heavy. This has got a drain on the bottom of it, what you can um, pull and let it all come out. But You've got to have containers big enough. Obviously, I didn't have a big enough container, as you can see. I had to keep emptying this one, so uh, that's why I chose to do it this way. Plus, once you've opened that flap, there's no shutting it back up again afterwards. Right, okay, it's the second one going in. Right, okay. I'll just put my mask on while I'm just pushing it and levelling it out. Uh, don't like to breathe in anything untoward. I think that's going to be enough to be honest with you. There we go, I'll show you. As you can see, I think that'll be enough. Um, I did have a wire mesh going over the top there, but uh, I took it out and uh, I just found it a lot easier to use like that. 
some of the stuff is very small that I want to do and it falls through the wire mesh so I'm happy with that anyway right so let's just put the nozzle back in I've just got one of these simple nozzles here with just a bit of a 22 mil copper pipe which I just stick in I find that easier uh, there is a conversion kit you can buy for these but uh, I'll give this a go for the moment as I say it was working absolutely fine when the glass uh, fragments were solid uh, but once they dispersed and went down to a tiny dust it was no good at all so I'm hoping this stuff's going to be a whole lot better anyway so let's put that in there for the moment shut the door and I quite like to give it a trial run so let's find something rusty and whack it in there result very quick to do actually to be honest with you and as you can see nicely blasted and ready now for a repaint so that basically means now that I've got this going now I can now start work and stripping down the uh, the engines which I'm gonna look at now I've got the 600 engine which is the original engine I was gonna put that back in I'm still now toying again with putting the 850 engine in which I've got as well so I'm going to pull that out and have a look at that. The simple reason being is that in today's road, on today's roads, I think you do need the extra push. Um, and also I think the older box isn't a synchro mesh box as well. So if I ever do sell the van in the future, the uh, Trotter van, the Renite Regal, I will sell it with the original engine and gearbox so someone could easily just uh, drop that back in if necessary. But I may go with the 850 after all. That means a bit of adaption on the back of the gearbox mount uh, to the chassis, but... Um, I'm sure I can come up with the right size bracket for that. Anyway, that's that. Let's move on and have a look at something else now. See you in a minute. <clears throat> it's something I wanted to share with you as well. Um, you know, Jimmy, he's had his like, body shop. He started from coal. He's only, he was only 19 when he started it. He's 21 now. That was about 18 months ago. Anyway, he got awarded for our uh, a business award. And we got actually got through to the finals, down to the final three. He didn't win it, but he got in second place. And uh, this is what he was awarded for. As you can see there, the East Lindsay Business Awards for Young Business Owner of the Year 2018. Jimmy Butler, JBS Auto Body and Paint finalist. As I say, he got down to the last three. And we was all invited along and there was a, a big dinner and dance sort of thing. And uh, as you can see there from the pictures there, me, Tracy and uh, Gary, Jimmy's brother, Sharon was taking the photo. She should have been in the photo, but never mind anyway. But as you can see, we had a lovely night there. It was a black tie event. And uh, yeah, this is going to go up in the wall in Jimmy's unit. So very pleased with Jimmy and he's done very well to get this far in such a short time all on his own. I know he's had me there as well to help. But uh, yeah, very well, very pleased with that. Anyway, slightly off subject again, you might know that Sharon's car got hit. Uh, I, I, think, I think I mentioned it in a previous video, her Vauxhall Vectra. And it was a front bumper that was damaged and also broke the uh, washer bottle. We'll have a look at that uh, maybe a bit later on. If not, it'll be, there'll be another video on the repair. Anyway, cut a long story short. Because it was uneconomical to repair, the insurance company said, uh, they wrote it off and it was just for the sake of a old for new parts, as you know what they're like, garages. And it, was, uh, it would have cost more to repair old for new parts, respray the whole front bumper, put a new uh, washer bottle in, sourcing all the parts brand new. Would have cost more than what the car was worth. Anyway, they settled out of court and we bought the car back off the insurance company. And uh, obviously the car's still drivable. It's literally a cosmetic repair. It was classed as an N, uh, which means I think it was just uneconomical to repair. But nothing structural damage or whatever, just cosmetic. Anyway, cut a long story short, we got a letter today from the insurance company. We've been using the car and the insurance company said that the car needs to go uh, for a, a re-MOT even though it wasn't due and you can't use the car until it's got a brand new MOT to say that it's roadworthy. 
So that's what we've got to do. So we've just taken it down for MOT. It did fail the MOT. Oh, apparently one of the headlights slightly shifted over. Uh, and obviously the washer bottle, uh, which we're going to replace anyway. We've already got the replacement there. And also we need to put a couple of new tyres on the front of it. But that was just nothing to do with the crash anyway. So we're going to be doing that. We're going to be taking that bumper cover off. Um, and also fitting the washer bottle. And while we've got it off, we might as well repair the bumper as well. So uh, that's coming up very shortly. So keep an eye out for that one. So yeah, if your car's... Uh, Uneconomical to repair, although it was an excellent car, very good car. In fact, the MOT tester said you got a very good car, a very solid sound car, and obviously low mileage as well. They would have taken that off of us, and they wanted to scrap it just because it was uneconomical to repair new for old parts. But well, we are in the body shop game, as you know. We're not going to buy brand new parts. We don't need to. We'll probably repair the bumper ourselves. I've got a new washer bottle, which we sourced, and we got that for five pounds. And it's just a matter of uh, realigning the headlight on that driver on the passenger side, which is the offside here in the, uh, no, sorry, the near side in the UK. And uh, we'll just take it back down and get it retested anyway. So there we go. So that works out all right for us in the end, but that means I've got to do some work on that. Anyway, let's have a look at these engines for the Reliant Regal. And uh, let's see what we've got to deal with. I've got two engines, one's the 850 and one's the original 600. Let's dig them out. I know a lot of you are going to say, you shouldn't lift that with your back, but uh, I did, I have done before, and I know I'm getting older and I probably should be using uh, two people here, but anyway, sometimes you just got to make do. If it, been, if it would have been way too heavy for me, I wouldn't have bothered it, obviously, because I, mean, I used to lift weights years ago, so you know your limits, basically, so... Uh, Anyway, this is the 850 engine, and uh, this is the first time I've even looked at it, so I think I'll turn it around the other way. Let me wind that handle in a bit. I don't know whether it's seized or, or not, I ain't got a clue. As I say, I've never, never looked at it at all. Try and find out a little bit more about it if we can. Just do these handles up a bit and I'll spin it around. It seems to be all there. It hasn't got the alternator with it. One of the other reasons as well, for me to probably choose this alternator, apart from having more power, is um, you've got an alternator that you can bolt straight onto this, as opposed to the other one, which is just dynamo. So let me just try and spin that round. I don't want it slipping off. As I said, I've had no dealings with this whatsoever. I don't know whether it's a runner. The chap who bought it was gonna put it in. Um, I think the first thing to do is to see if the crank turns over, which is that one there. See, depending what model this come off of, that's a 14 mil, which don't quite fit, or does it? 14 is a little bit tight, and it's too loose for a 15. 9 sixteenths, maybe, which goes straight on. So it's still imperial, this. So, just be interested to see if it turns over or not, won't it? As I say, I've never done it. Oh, yeah, it's all free, look. Nice and free, so that's a good start anyway. So what I could do is to, uh, I don't know about the gearbox obviously, I will take that off, it's gonna have a new clutch in it with whatever I decide to have done to it anyway. Um, I could give it a bit of a brush down, there's loads of rubbish. As you can see on the top here, all, all works, works probably been sitting in a garage somewhere I suppose, I don't know, but uh, this is it, this is what I've got, this is the 851 as I said to you. Uh, that's obviously a I've reversed light I would imagine coming off of there earth strap coming around here metal clip on the uh, top of the gearbox I don't know about that at the moment we'll have a look at that when we strip it down so with with the other one it's got a slightly different gearbox mount on this one compared to the original so uh, that's something I'm gonna have to look into there's the clutch push rod bar there as you can see and coming around here, let's see if we can clean these numbers up a little bit. We'll just spray some uh, cleaner on here. Just see if that can throw any light on the uh, the model or whatever we have here. We're not too sure yet. So, so this looks like it's got 4E-8-7976. So whether that means it's... Uh, 
I don't know, 797cc and 800, I don't know, I don't know how they word these, but uh, someone might be able to watch this video and at least give me some sort of indication as to what I've got here. As I say, this is the, uh, what I thought was an 850 engine, so we don't know yet, so we're going to have to obviously find that out, hopefully from the number. The rocker cover colour, you can normally go by these as well, looks like to be blue in colour, if that means anything. It's either a blue or a green there by the looks of that. The original colour. I'd say that was original colour, yeah, that's a sort of a bluey colour there. Distributor there, that's obviously the fuel pump down there. Uh, thermostat housing, that's not a problem there. And timing chest cover. All this is going to be stripped down, but I think I'll start off just giving it a dust down with some engine cleaner just to get all this stuff off, and uh, we might have a look inside in a minute. So I'll see you in a minute. Right, I've given it a bit more of a clean down now. I've cleaned around the gearbox area. I've also had to go and have a wash. I was actually really covered in crap, so let's have a little look at the back side of it now. Right, well, as you can see, the gearbox has cleaned up very nicely, to be honest with you, so I'm well pleased with that. I presume this is the right gearbox fitted to this engine. There's no reason why it shouldn't be. And um, as I say, I've got to sort out the mount, uh, the engine cages. Now, it's now manageable. I can now take it apart. I'm not going to do that in this video. But it's a lot cleaner. I do hate getting my hands dirty on really greasy, grimy engines. So uh, that should be a lot more easier to take apart now. And I would presume that this one had the bracketry for the alternator as opposed to the dynamo. So I'm hoping that this is the right engine from that. As I say, I'm hoping you can confirm the engine by the engine numbers we looked at earlier on. And that will probably be our starting point. So anyway, there you go. That's this little video. Don't forget to look out for further videos. We've got the Vauxhall Vectra repairs coming up very, very shortly. We're going to start stripping this engine down. I think I'm going with this one if it is an 850 engine as opposed to the original. But if I do sell the car in the future, I will obviously sell the original engine uh, and the gearbox with it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Don't forget to rate, comment and obviously subscribe if you, uh, if you like my videos. And check out my other videos in my playlists. And we'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now.